JFT just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's daily market review for June the 14th. I am Haralamos Pissuros, head of research here at JFD. I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events, and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not, does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered, considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded higher against all but one of the other G10 currencies on Monday during the Asian session Tuesday. It gained the most uh, against NOC, Aussie, Kiwi and SEC in that order, while the currency against which it failed to, re to record any gains was uh, the Japanese yen. Specifically, dollar yen was found virtually unchanged this morning. Now, the strengthening of the US dollar and the Japanese yen combined with the weakening of the risk linked Aussie and Kiwi suggests that the broader market sentiment may have continued trading, uh, uh, that um, the financial world may have continued trading in a risk of uh, fashion yesterday and today in Asia. Indeed, turning our gaze to, uh, to the equity world, we see that uh, major. Um, uh, major European indices traded in the red, with the risk aversion accelerating during the US session and uh, rolling into the Asian trading today. The main losers were Nasdaq, which has already been in a bear market, and the S&P 500, which entered bear market uh, yesterday. Now, the catalyst behind the steep losses may have been the unexpected acceleration in Friday's uh, US inflation data. The headline rate uh, rose to 8.6% year-over-year from 8.3% at the time when the forecast was for, uh, for an unchanged number. Uh, the core CPI slowed by less than its uh, own forecast suggested. Expectations uh, were for the core rate uh, to slide to 5.9% from 6.2%, but instead it slid to 6%. In our view, this may have added more credence to the view that the Fed is unlikely to pause its hiking process uh, after summer and may have increased speculation for an even more aggressive path. Indeed, according to the CME Fed Watch uh, tool, today market participants are almost fully pricing in a 75 basis points rate hike at tomorrow's gathering, despite several policymakers laying the ground for a 50 basis points liftoff and another one of that size in July. Now, it is worth, it is worth noting that the financial world is uh, assigning a 70% probability for another 75 basis points increase in uh, July. So, in our view, such an aggressive pricing increases the risks for a disappointment. Remember that uh, not long ago, just after the minutes of the prior gathering were out, there was speculation that the Fed may decide to take a break after uh, summer, but this narrative was dismissed by several uh, Fed officials who, who they've uh, clearly telegraphed uh, 50 basis points hikes, though uh, for uh, the upcoming uh, meetings. So. With the current market pricing, a 50 basis points hike tomorrow could come as a disappointment and may result in a setback in uh, the US dollar and a rebound in equities. However, even if this is the case, we believe that even if the new dot plot falls short of, um, uh, of, um, of the current market pricing, uh, it may keep the Fed as uh, more aggressive than uh, some other major central banks like the Bank of England and the ECB and thus we will treat a potential setback as a corrective phase. We would expect the dollar to slowly regain that ground. That ground. Uh, 
Uh, now, if indeed officials deliver a triple hike and the dot plot matches market expectations with regards to the future, the dollar is likely to continue climbing higher despite the latest overstretched reaction against, against uh, some of its major peers. Just for the record, according to the Fed Fund futures, interest rates are now seen peaking at around 4% next summer. Having said all that though, we see the case of officials uh, matching the extremely hoggish market expectations as unlikely. They may prefer to wait for more data to come out before they signal that they will proceed so aggressively. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested uh, in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So, goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.